There's a lot to get through in today's video. We have had the market do another bit of a pullback here, but we're going to discuss whether or not I think that's bad news or in fact could be good for the market. And of course, we will be going through the technicals, the fundamentals and some awesome cryptocurrencies that you guys want to be paying attention to that I'm personally paying a lot of attention to. And so far, we have been making some incredible gains here on the channel. So if you are new to the channel, I make cryptocurrency content each and every day. So hit that subscribe button down there and let's jump into it. So Bitcoin spot ETFs bled 223 million yesterday with Grayscale's GBTC alone losing 303 million in a day. So we were discussing this on the channel was the fact that Genesis had finished selling their Bitcoin uh, or their GBTC shares. Was that going to help the outflows of Grayscale? So far, no, not at all. We still got tons of outflows for Grayscale. This is not a great start to the week, so we need to keep a close eye on today's movements. If we do take a look at this chart, we can see that the outflows definitely, definitely outweigh the inflows to the ETFs overall. We can see over the last couple of months here, there has only been a couple of days with net outflows, the rest being very, very positive inflows, which is definitely good for me. And we do also have... BlackRock and Fidelity's Bitcoin ETFs making history. Don't forget this on a day like today when Bitcoin is pulling back and everyone is scared again. I'm sure people are scared again, but there's absolutely no reason to be because if we do check this down here, we can see iBit and FBTC have outperformed 99.9% .9 of all ETFs ever launched since the market began in 1990. They were roughly 9,000 ETFs globally at the end of 2022. IBIT and FBTC will enter the top 10 ranking if they continue to see inflows for another 11 days. So basically, we are still seeing GBTC hold down the ETF market. That's what's happening. That's what's been happening. And slowly but surely, they will be running out of Bitcoin to sell. That's my opinion anyway. And then when that day comes, we will start to see Bitcoin's price go even higher. Now, when that will come, I do not know. But it's my belief that right now the market is in a little bit of a cooling off period. We can see this clearly demonstrated by the Google Trends chart. Most retail that came in recently with the ETF news, this is what this chart is pushing up. This is retail investors searching for crypto again. Of course, me and you are retail investors, but these are new retail investors. The search terms for crypto increasing, right? And this is just literally dropped off a cliff. So everyone got excited. They were like, oh my God, Bitcoin's at a new all-time high. Then it did pull back. Remember, we had Bitcoin dropping quite significantly. We had a price drop all the way to uh, 60,000 from the highs of 72. So during this period, everyone lost interest again. Now, these people will start to come back once they realize, because no one's noticed yet, that Bitcoin is actually above 70,000 again. So once it breaks 72 or 73,000 again, the mainstream media outlets will start talking about it. And that is when the retail will come back again. As we can see here from the technicals, I think that this is still a very, very strong looking chart. We had our bull flag form. We broke out of it. We did get involved in a trade for this actually down around the $64,000 region. So right around here, we got involved in that. Of course, if you want to stay up to date when I make any trade, you can see my trades directly here in the Patreon, which you can get access to uh, using the Patreon link down there in my description. But just the other day, we actually did a 40x on a crypto. So that's kind of the opportunity you get sitting in there. And, and guys, if you do want to trade this market like I did with Bitcoin and Solana recently with leverage, you can do so over on Simple FX. Right now, if you use my link, you can sign up and get $5,000 deposit bonus plus 5% cash back for 30 days, which is pretty awesome, right? And on top of that, on Simple FX, you can actually trade a whole host of other instruments, including crypto, stocks, ETFs, commodities, FX, everything all in one place. So this is probably something that if you are looking for a new exchange, you want to trade on. Their 24-hour volume is sitting at around 56 million with over 23 million registered users, 160 supported countries, and a thousand different tokens listed. So I will leave a link to them down there in the description. And then jumping back into the technicals here, you can see that we are in this support zone that I've drawn in. I drew it in back here, but you can see it's played in all 
all the way for the last month or so we have been sitting here and right now we have come down to retest this zone the bottom of this zone is around 69,000, which i do think we could probably come down to touch again maybe even wicking below it because what's going to happen we'll see mass liquidations mass liquidations sit at around the 68.7 region so if bitcoin does push down to our support right here it will touch it and then we'll get a cascading liquidation of a bunch of positions right long positions will be liquidated this will probably push the price of bitcoin down again giving us another opportunity so be watching this closely that's what's happening on the technicals in my opinion and of course we still have our trades open that we can see here bitcoin is in 237 percent 237 dollars profit solana's trade has come down sadly i didn't take any profit from that but we have ethereum still in profit we have sui we do have say in a loss right now so this is definitely something uh, to consider we have 500 dollars realized profit but 600 dollars uh, unrealized loss so about 100 dollars there in loss but we could add to this position as we go down as you know this is how i trade so again all of the links that i use for my trading are down there in the description now we have this good news about blackrock we have this bad news about the etfs uh, about gbtc but we do also have uh, Bitcoin closing two monthly candles above the Bollinger Band. And this is Da Vinci, the guy who called out Bitcoin at $1. And he is saying that historical data shows that whenever this happens, Bitcoin's price has doubled within three months. So we could be looking at a doubling for Bitcoin right now, sitting us around $140,000 for Bitcoin, which would be absolutely awesome. And of course, we have the Bitcoin halving coming in just 10 days. Historically, this is a very very bullish event for Bitcoin. So I am very excited about this. I actually quite I actually don't mind Grayscale's GBTC selling right now and holding the market down because it gives us more opportunity to dollar cost average into the positions that we believe in. The market will go parabolic again. As long as we're patient, it's going to happen again. Okay, that's my opinion anyway. Now looking at altcoins and opportunities in this market, one particular altcoin that I hold a large position in that is basically being ignored in this market is Polkadot. Polkadot breaks records with over 600,000 active addresses right now, okay? So Moonbeam stands out as the major contributor to the active addresses within the Polkadot blockchain ecosystem, boasting around 250,000. Remember the project that we spoke about that is built on Moonbeam originally is of course Moonwell, the one that everyone hates because it has moon in the name, but... Good stuff here. I still hold a big position in Polkadot. I am considering actually adding to this position as well because, again, one of the projects that has not pumped really at all since the start of this bull run that we've been in. Now, from there, we get a little bit more risky. Yesterday, we did mention Pepper. This is uh, just a hands-down meme coin here. I'm holding this. It did go up about a 3x since we spoke about it yesterday. So great, great opportunity there. Sitting still at a tiny market cap of 369000 dollars fully diluted so very high risk potentially high reward hopefully this continues to run as we go i would love to see a multi-million dollar market cap for pepper now all of the projects that i speak about in this little spotlight section i will leave down there in the description but please do understand first i'm not a financial advisor second i'm not telling you to go out and buy anything and third of all of course i hold the projects that i speak about else why would i speak about them right they're, they're my investments that i'm excited about if we do look here we can see a another opportunity reddit which i spoke to you guys about yesterday too up a little bit since yesterday it was sitting at about a seven million dollar market cap now 7.9 but you can see we are well on our way to breaking these old highs so we did have a pullback for the coin then this consolidation phase and now it seems like we are potentially breaking out of that consolidation phase so i'm watching this one closely and then finally we do have satoshi sync this is a project that i brought to you guys i was an early investor into this i showed you how to buy it it then went on a pretty good run I must say a very nice run then we had this pullback and I spoke to you guys about it sitting right here at around the 10 cent region now since that pullback we have had a push upwards we have had a an increase of price of around 32% since then. It did, however, push up, get rejected at about the 20 cent region, finding some support here. So I'm pretty excited about this project. Of course, I'm still a holder as well. And I am very, very bullish about the BRC20 
ecosystems, right? Bitcoin altcoins. That's what I'm excited about. And I think that's going to be a huge narrative going into this bull run video. I want to play you this video where CNBC called this guy crazy three times in a row for saying that people should allocate 1% of their portfolio to Bitcoin when it was $5,000. Enjoy. If you actually think it's undervalued by that extent? Well, you know, we've kind of, we think the best approach for most people is just to put 1% or 2%. Are you into- saying that? I get that if you're somebody who's got a lot of assets. I, I still think it's crazy. But for a retail investor, somebody who's saving for retirement and putting that aside, that seems crazy to me. Well, it's basically the idea that, you know, you can afford to lose 1% if that's 1% of your portfolio. That's but- crazy. You might as well throw it away on high fees to an investor, to, to an average. Like this, you're taking a flyer on that. You don't know where it's going to go or what's going to happen. Well, in a way, that's right, Becky, that for the majority of people, it's, you know, 1% is like a small risk bet. But, you know, Bitcoin makes all of its gains in 10 days in a year. I think this is an example that, you know, if you exclude the 10 best days, Bitcoin loses 25% a year. So you got to essentially hold it or hodl it, as they say, uh, to really capture the gains.